What's going on guys? This is Dreams once again with another Nat Reduction problem to solve. And in this intro in this problem, sorry, we wanna we wanna solve a cube, okay? So I'm gonna tell you guys the steps that I do take in order to solve these problems. When I've got so many literals in front of me, first thing that I think I see, okay, I've got an implication here, so maybe I can use more exponents on this one. If I can get a P, then I can deduce Q. On this one, if I can say, if I can say, um, not P implies R, I can get, um, I can get a P, and then use it on this rule down here. And this one, if I can simply get S, maybe um, P will be easy to use. And this one is or elimination one, I believe, is one of the derived rules. And this one we can use as the or elimination. I think it's or yeah or elimination. I think that's how it calls or elimination. And this one says that R implies something and S implies something. Therefore, if you start from R or S, you can get that something. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. So this is the rule that we're gonna be using probably. So this can be my R or S. So now, as you can see, R has to imply something and S has to imply something. Okay, so we can say R over here implies <coughs> implies P. Why P? Because I can see that if I can get this P out, I can use it here and get my Q, and then I'm done. So I can say I. R implies P and also the reason I'm using P is because I can see down here I can I can easily prove a P by using this rule down here negation elimination okay so then I'm gonna say R implies not R sorry I'm gonna say S implies P therefore I can get P out okay so let me get the data out for you guys so you guys can see it properly uh, let me delete this okay so let me get the data out for you guys I'm going to say line number one I've got P implies Q line number two I've got not P implies not R and then line number three I can say P or S not S sorry and then line number four I can say R or I can say R or <coughs> S. Let me see if everything is right. Yeah, so on line number five, I can start from here. So I can say this is going to be my line, line number five and line number six. Okay, so line number five, I can say uh, R implies P. Okay, uh, 5.1, as you guys always know, assumption straight away. Then 5.2. I can get P out yeah so I know that if I can say P implies sorry not P implies R I can use line number two and get P out easily and then I'm done okay so over here I want to prove but let me make it black by the way over here over here I want to say Sorry, no, I want to say I want to prove uh, P. Okay, so five point three. I can say not. Sorry, guys. I can say. Oops. I can say not. P implies um, implies R, and five point two point one. As you guys know, subcomputation always subcomputation. And then 5.2.1. This is not P. Oops, this is not P. And 5.2.2. I can say R from the assumption. Okay, from 5.1. This bit I'm done. All right, so line. <coughs> Then, <clears throat> sorry, so line 5.3, I can say 
P. I can say P uh, using 5.2 uh, line number 2 and negation elimination. Uh, uh, negation elimination is the way around. So negation elimination. Okay. Uh, let me show you the rule that I've used. So this this is the rule. So I, I can say not P implies R, which is this bit down here. Then I said not P implies not R, which I can get it easily from the data. Then I can say P. So this bit I'm done. Okay. So now I need to to say R <coughs> on line number six, as I said before, S implies uh, P. Okay, so line number six, line number six, I can say S implies P, and then six point six point one <coughs> S <coughs> S is assumption, sorry, and then six point two, as I said before, using the derived rule, if I can get S, I can get P out because. This rule says if you have not S line, if you have S telling the truth and you've got P which is telling the truth, therefore S cannot be telling the truth and lying at the same time, P must be true. Okay, so and this is the rule that I've used uh, P implies uh, not S. Oh, sorry, not P implies not S, P or S, and then either you have not s you can say p okay so line number oh by the way this is the negate uh, or elimination one i believe you can guys check it out and line number 6.2 i can say p uh, by saying or elimination one using a line num number three and 6.1 okay then line number seven, yeah. As I said, if I can get uh, P out, okay, I can get Q. I can say line number seven. I can say, I can say P because of this rule. So line number five is completed. Line number six is completed. We've got this line. Therefore, we can say P easily. Okay. So using, I think is all um, elimination. I think that's 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 the name of the rule or elimination on line number uh, which lines are so it's line number four line number five and line number six and then since I've got this <coughs> this P out now I can use it in line number eight <coughs> and I can say Q because this is what I want let me put in black I can say Q because modus ponens says if you have uh, in our case if we have p then we have p implies q we can deduce q easily okay so you guys better memorize this rule because it is used a lot and it makes the life easier and therefore i can get my q using modus ponens um, line number one and seven thanks for watching my tutorial please don't forget to subscribe and if you have any other way to solve this maybe a shorter way please let me know and I'll be happy to learn from you guys see you next time